Hello and welcome back to some brand new episodes of Kyle Engineers. Today we're going to be looking at suspension geometry. This is a very requested subject. Now specifically we're going to be looking at caster, camber, kingpin inclination angle and scrub radius. Now these are all different concepts so I'm going to split them up into four different videos. I'd just like to say that the website MotoIQ com has some really good reads on this handling stuff. You should definitely go and check that out after here. I didn't steal all my material from there, if that's what you're asking. I do actually have a lot of experience in this area, but I really recommend it for a good solid read. So today's lesson is going to be on scrub radius. Now scrub radius is a very simple concept. As with most suspension concepts, this is easiest to explain using a double A arm configuration. Although the principles apply the same, whether you're using this or a McPherson strut or anything like that. If we imagine a straight line between the two suspension pickup points, or if it's a McPherson strut, the, uh, the upper strut housing and the lower pickup point, and we draw a line down at the king plane inclination angle, which is covered in my other video, and then we take a line through the center of the tire, sorry that's a little bit off, to where they intersect at the ground, we'll see that there's a distance between here and here. It's usually only pretty small. This is known as the scrub radius. Why is it called the scrub radius? Well, it's because this is where the tire wants to pivot around the ground as a result of the axis you've defined. But the center of the tire is offset of that. So the center of the effective section that the tire contact patch is grabbing is offset from where you're trying to pivot it around. So as a result, the tire scrubs around it. You can see this really, really severely demonstrated in things like go-karts, which have enormous scrub radii. And in their case, the wheel is hugely offset from the pivot axis. Now, the scrub radius adds steering weight. You get a lot of steering rate weight from that scrub radius when you're at standstill. Once you're going more, the scrub radius is far less dominant and you end up getting more caster-dominated effects. As far as what are the consequences of scrub radius? Well, handling-wise, there's not an enormous amount of consequence of scrub radius, apart from the fact that sometimes too high a scrub radius can lead to undesirable uh, tire scrub in lower speed corners. It's mainly a lower speed corner thing. But more importantly, it's a structural issue. So in a lot of cars where you can't run more king plane inclination angle and you have to have the tire fairly offset, or if you're using offset spaces on a car, as a lot of people do, which spaces out the tire, you end up with a lot of extra leverage being applied on your components. If you imagine this tire takes an impact from the front in something like say an off-road scenario, or even just a speed bump, you can see that it's going to force that tire back. Or even under braking, it, the force will be outside of here. So the more you increase this distance, the more you increase the torque of whatever force is applied longitudinally on the tire. This will increase stress in your tie rods if this is your front tire, or in your rear tire it will increase stress in your control arms, or depending on what setup you've got, it could vary dramatically. Now, this is why you don't want excessive scrub radius. So you can run, some cars run 20 mil of scrub radius, some cars run negative scrub radius. Um, and it's all sort of a decision on how you want to load your components and how you want your driver feel to be. So that's scrub radius explained. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out the other videos. If you liked, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hopefully see you next time.